and to the world of the Argentine design engineer Sergio Rinland. After a stellar Formula One career, Sergio today splits his time as a consultant for companies like Jaguar Land Rover, as a university lecturer at Oxford Brooks, and as a very creative entrepreneur. Craig met him recently in his home in Surrey. The car itself, I mean, it's a very neat design, very sort of typical of, sort of your designs. It's all, all of the edges and all of the shapes were very neat. But it was also a very long car as well, wasn't it? It was a fairly long car because it was, it, what we did was a narrow fuel tank mm -hmm. to get a good cooling system. Ah. And it, that made the fuel tank longer. Okay. So and what? ended up with a long car. Okay. It's more, more of a sort of a packaging uh, idea than a vehicle dynamics idea, if you will. But it worked. Yeah, because obviously even nowadays everyone's still talking about wheelbase as a critical factor. It is. It's, 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 it's something about going around corners, but there's lots of other factors about getting the wheelbase It's the weight right. distribution. And making the car long, he actually achieved the right weight distribution, and that's why the car was, it had good handling, was sort of easy to drive, if any Formula One car is easy to drive, <laughs> but it was, it was comfortable for the driver to go fast. In terms of the design and then construction of the car, you were working for uh, Dallara, uh, so it was yes. your design, Dallara manufactured. And obviously going back to the, the way that you had the, your design, Dallara construction, has echoes even nowadays with the way that Haas are approaching Formula One with the listed parts and using Dallara um, as a partner to manufacture the car? Yeah, very similar. Because I, I don't think that Dallara, in terms of philosophy of working, has changed. Mm. because Mr. Dallara is still at the helm. So the way he thinks is the way he runs the company and, and every time I go there, I, it's like walking at home again. I see more people, but it's not a different place. Bernie is the one who talked to me at, uh, in Spain of 88 and um, Sort of, he said, well, you, he, didn't, he didn't actually say, would you like to come back? He said, you have to come back. <laughs> or what you want to do is come back to Brabham. So no, I see. that means, yeah, you come back to Brabham. So I did. We were going to run from a, from a, a, a BMW turbo four cylinder to a normally aspirated three liter V8. Mm -hmm. So it was a clean sheet of paper. So it was more a development of what we did, what I did at uh, Dallara Scuderia Italia than what I did the Brahman before. It was a time of a lot of development with ground effect on flat bottom cars. Mm. And um, Jean-Claude Mijo with Tyrrell came up with a right nose on the, on the, on the uh, Tyrrell. Mm -hmm. And that also opened, opened our eyes, all of us. Mm. When I'm saying the whole Formula One, we thought, oh, there's something there. So we all started to research into that. And then we hired a new aerodynamicist which I still consider today a genius, Hans Fouché. Mm -hmm. And we did what you do today in CFE, or what you see at the track with this sort of map of pitot tubes to mm -hmm. measure um, uh, air direction and velocity. Mm -hmm. So we did that all along the cigar of the car. Mm -hmm. you know, and that sort of dictated the shape of the nose, the front wing, the end plates, all the end plates around the front, the front tires, the side pots, the cooling, and so on. And that was the first car to have the front wing end plates that actually came in board on the... Yes, I'm not sure if it was the first, but it was, but it was one, one of the, of the first. first. I still value that car as probably the, 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 the best design I did in, 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 in the era. The whole nose front wing shape was designed with the, what we knew about the flow around the tires and the nose. That's mm -hmm. why it had a very narrow nose, very high, very clean, and then it had channels on the side, which is very similar to the waist that cars now have. Not only mm -hmm. Formula One cars, Le Mans cars, even cars on the road. <laughs> they all have this waist. Well, we had two channels on the side mm -hmm. that it was an idea I came talking to one of my young aerodynamicists at the time and throwing lines on paper and see what the flow was doing. And we thought, well, if we do that, because the, the biggest problem the car had was the air going underneath the floor mm -hmm. and sort of increasing the pressure instead of reducing it. Yeah. So what do we do so the air doesn't go underneath? And I said, well, if we do a false kick mm -hmm. above, we change the direction of the air with the flow, which is what we did. 
So the air, when it got to the actual floor, instead of going like this, it was going like this. And in order to package these kind of undercut sort of Coke bottle yeah. area side pods, you had to play about with the cooling quite a bit. I mean. Yeah, the radiators were sort of done in, like they done today, with sort of shape. As opposed to just rectangular. Yeah, exactly, it wasn't rectangular. And we had a lot of problems because obviously, even though they were made by Bayer, who mm -hmm. was probably at the time the top radiator manufacturer, uh, we still had problems because they were cracking and they were leaking because obviously the shape was not square. Mm. It was something new. So we had a little bit of problem. Not in the races, but in testing.